I'm Nastasia Aronso. Welcome to The Alternative Investor, where we take you inside the world of alternative investments. With major art fairs taking place across the world globally, and locally, art enthusiasts are questioning whether to acquire works of art as an investment. David Ross, an art collector, shares his tips. How do you put a rand value for a piece of art for something like this, or even more interesting, for something like this? Well, that's the billion dollar question. And actually, it's been estimated that 550,000 fine art lots were sold last year globally, generating an estimated $13.3 billion. David Ross, an art dealer based in Johannesburg, says the South African art market, however, punches well above its own weight and is responsible for some of the top contemporary art produced and traded globally. How do you know if an art piece is a great art piece? I think what makes it fairly easy for me is the fact that I've been interested in art ever since I was at university. So I've been collecting, I've looked at so many artworks throughout my life. And um, so immediately I think if someone even considers buying art to invest or buying art, it's very important that they should go to as many exhibitions as possible. So that at least you know you get an idea of a different art, there's a different type of art, etc. So yeah, I think it's, it, your eye gets better over the years. Good art pieces can be quite pricey. Is there scope for one to negotiate the art price? When, depending on when you're older or younger, financially what your situation is. And I strongly believe one can buy very good art for very good prices as well. There's no question about that. But when you young, don't try and buy a name. Uh, because often uh, artists have already got a big name, also comes at an extremely high price tag. So it makes a lot more sense to try and look for better known artists and again, what you really like. But yes, try and get a bit more information about the artist. Uh, and there, I think, is where you're going to decide uh, what gallery you're going to deal with, uh, who is the person is that you're going to guide you a bit. Uh, the price of an artwork is in the end, I think, what you are prepared to pay for it. So if you want to pay what in my mind is an ugly artwork, if you're prepared to pay 100,000 rand for it, that is a price for you. But, uh, and there I just think it just makes much more sense if you do a bit of research or get a bit more, just look at more artworks from that same and then you weigh it up and then decide whether you really want to spend your hundred thousand rand on this. Just because some art costs millions of rands doesn't mean that you have to pay the same amount. A worthwhile investment could be something that you like costing just a few thousands of rands. Well, according to a UBS art report, global art sales reached an estimated $64.1 billion in 2019, a decrease of 5% compared to the previous year. The U.S. retained its position as the largest market globally, accounting for 44% of the market share. To take us through the local art scene, we're joined via Cape Town by Stephen Hunt, who is the curator at Sunlam. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. Perhaps let's look at the local art scene. How are we doing? Well, the local art stream has been particularly strong over the last few years, especially if you're looking at contemporary art. I think that that's very often people see the art scene as one homogenous big sort of um, world as such, and when in fact it's it's quite quite diverse in terms of what kind of artworks are sold where and so on. But generally, we've certainly seen quite a strong art scene within the country itself. Well, compared to equities and bonds, how much worse or better does it fare when you look at the rate of return? I think that's not an easy question to answer because certainly art is each individual item is an individual piece. So it's very really difficult to make a comparison with bonds or any form of stock because one Anglo-American share is the same as every other Anglo-American share. Each Artwork is 99% of the time completely different to the next one. So if you want to talk sort of broadly you know, and do a survey, has 
anybody who's done investing in art done well. If they've done well, it's because they're probably very good at it. But certainly, if you do your your job well, you inform yourself, you get, and you know what's going on, you can make very good returns. So certainly, if you've seen a young and artist who's starting to develop in the art market and you've bought them at a very reasonable price, which is very often a hotly debated topic, you could have made made a good return. Certainly your big names like William Kentridge have also been proven to be good investments. And certainly for many people, an artwork or good work by William Kentridge has proven to be a good hedge, not only against inflation, but also depreciation of the rand. Right. Let's uh, look at the different art categories. I mean, um, what art categories have the most and least investment potential? Okay, so let's first talk about perhaps the, the, the different markets you have. You have a primary market where artists sell their work through a gallery or any other system, so it comes directly from the artist through an agent onto the market. And in that in that sphere, certainly your top-notch contemporary artists that have been recognized not only here but also by curators and collectors overseas have certainly done done very well. And it's probably at the moment the most how could you, successful art market in South Africa at the moment. But, of course, everybody celebrates success and keeps quiet about failure. And in essence, one has to be very shrewd and careful about purchases here because, like I say, in many instances on the art market, you have lots of shooting stars that burn brightly and briefly, in a sense. So they get picked up by the gallery and by collectors, and they burn very brightly, and they sell for good prices over a short period of time. And then later on, one sees a decline in the price, or one actually often sees that the artist is no longer practicing. So while you can get very good returns, you can also have severe failures and therefore the risks are pretty high. The secondary market is when works are resold, usually on auction. At least on auction you have the semblance of a, how do you say, managed price fixing mechanism. So at least you know that you are bidding against other people who are interested and the price achieved on the auction is at least an indication of at least two persons who wanted to buy that work at that price or close to it. And what one's seen in the auction market, which has been quite strong in South Africa over the last 10 years, is that the really good works seem still to make record prices even today and where we are sitting in lockdown and everything. Artists that were popular in the 70s and 80s, which were decorative painters, you know, that people collected because they made a nice image of Table Mountain or something like that or a landscape, have lost their popularity dramatically. You're looking at price declines of up to 70% over the last few years. And that's because very much many of those sort of artworks are compared to, to interior decoration items in the end of the day. Right. They are sentimental, they are decorative, beautiful, well done, but not collectible necessarily. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That's Stefan Hunt, who's the curator at Sunlam. That's it from me. After this, we'll have more of your news. But for now, your weather details are up next.